Thanks, everybody, for coming today. Um, we're very excited to announce today that Dusty Baker is the new manager of the Houston Astros. Um, we hired Dusty for two reasons. He's a person of high integrity. He's a respected leader. Um, he has great baseball experience, and he will earn the players' trust. The second reason, Dusty has one of the most impressive records in baseball. He had a storied career on and off the field. He's the best person to lead this team to a championship. His gold is our gold. Um, on January 13, uh, MLB made a decision um, on, on uh, um, fines for the, for the Astros. Um, we took that to a higher standard. We're holding the Astros to a higher standard. This is today is a reinforcement with hiring Dusty um, to live up to that commitment. Um, hiring Dusty Baker is one big step for us to move forward. And I believe Dusty is the right person at the right time. We're absolutely thrilled to have him here. Uh, please join me in welcoming Dusty and his family to the Astros family. We gotta put a shirt on. No. You can button a couple buttons. We'll take a picture. Yeah. That sound like I'm in a typewriter. <laughs> All right. Let's take a photo now, guys. Hey, guys. Yeah. Thank you. First, I'd like to say it's a beautiful day. Uh, I left this morning very early from, from California. Uh, set my alarm at 2 o'clock uh, in the morning. And uh, I beat the alarm up by an hour because I, I was excited about getting here. And uh, very thrilled to be here, um, seeing so many faces that I've seen for so many years, and uh, had no idea that I'd be sitting in this seat um, on this day. Um, you know, God has truly been been good to you know to me and my family. You know, throughout my life, and especially um, you know, this is my last last hurrah, and I didn't. I thought my last hurrah was in Washington, actually, because I gave all my stuff away. I went to I went to um, uh, find my shoes. Uh, I went up in the attic and I found an empty bag. I didn't even have underwear. I didn't have anything in that bag. So uh, you know, this is a new beginning for me. Uh, my wife's very excited. My son is extremely uh, uh, excited, and uh, so I got to bring him some gear back. Uh, you know, today I just uh, I didn't know which player he wanted because he usually he's a front runner because he likes the best players and so uh you know we got quite a few best players on this team uh it's an outstanding um organization i've been coming here for years and years i actually got my first hit in the astrodome uh 1972 against jerry royce and uh, I have some great battles here with Enos Cabell and, uh, you know, Jose Cheo Cruz and Nolan Ryan and J.R. Richard. I mean, we had some outstanding uh, battles here. I always respected uh, people uh, that lived here. Uh, uh, my former wife, all of her family was from here. I spent a lot of time, uh, you know, here. And a lot of my players still live here. I got calls from from everyone. I even got called from Shane Reynolds, you know, saying, hey, man, you need to come join us. And Charlie Hayes and Mike Jackson and Trinidad Hubbard, you'd be surprised how many guys have called me, uh, you know, welcoming me, uh, you know, to the city. My pass list might be a little long, Jim, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm excited to, to be here and excited to, to win because this is, uh, you know, my last chance at, uh, you know, to accomplish the goal. Um, I, I was happy, but I wasn't satisfied where I was and what I was doing because, um, you know, something's missing. And uh, um, I, I think the Lord gave me the best chance to, you know, to accomplish, you know, what I need as a, as a person, as a father, and as a man. 
All right, thank you, Dusty. Please raise your hand if you'd like, like to ask a question. Okay, Francisco, right here. Mr. Baker, welcome, uh, welcome to Houston, sir. I mean, your past is prologue. And uh, I have a, one question for you and one question for you, Mr. Crane. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Baker, uh, you obviously know what happened here and the right. past and the prologue of the Houston <coughs> Astros and the future of the Houston Astros. What do you identify as the greatest challenge that you have and where your experience, your vast experience, is going to help you to overcome those challenges? And for you, Mr. Crane, why, why Dusty Baker? Well, I think, uh, you know, in life, all of your experiences of your past, you know, should help you in the present. And, uh, you know, I've been through a lot of things in my life. You know, I feel that I can help the players. I feel like I can help this organization. I feel like I can help the city. Um, uh, you know, I wasn't here, you know, when a lot of this happened, but I followed it. And, and I felt very, very badly for, you know, the city and the, and the organization and then, you know, whatever players were involved. But, you know, this is a new beginning. It's a new beginning for us, a new beginning for me. And I think that, that the thing that we have going, going for us is, is the amount of love that I see uh, that the players have for the city and the city has for the players and also the cities have for each, and the players have for each other. And uh, so it, it's going to be very, very, very positive. Um, uh, you know, I knew it was going to be challenging when I, you know, when I took the position. But, you know, I've always raised uh, to the challenge, and uh, I know I'm going to do great, and the team's going to do great. Yes, um, on, on Dusty, you know, as you all know, we, we interviewed a number of great candidates. Um, it became clear uh, right away that, you know, um, not only Dusty wanted to help, he wanted the job. And, you know, I went over his credentials. They're extremely impressive. And, he, you know, he's been noted. I, I hadn't met him before. We talked about three hours. I thought we were old friends when we got done. So he was very easy to visit with. I know we'll get along well together. Um, but he's a great players manager. And we need some, some help there right now. And he can step in and do the job. So we're very happy to have him. Okay, Kim, right here. Hi, Dusty. Welcome to Houston. Thank you. Um, you mentioned that you thought you were done, like it was, you know, you, mm -hmm. were, you were finished. What, what made you decide to come back, and what excites you most about this opportunity? Well, uh, you know, number one, I got a call from, you know, from Mr. Crane here. And, uh, you know, I got my juices to flowing, and uh, uh, I discussed it with my wife and discussed it really with my, with my family. And they said, Dad, you know, you got to make yourself happy. And uh, they said, you've done so much for everybody else in your life. And, and you know, we want you to, you know, to be happy. And, and they know that what makes me happy is competition and the quest for, you know, for winning. And, uh, and you know, then when I got the call, um, then I said, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to do whatever I can and be as honest as I can, you know, with, uh, with, you know, with uh, Mr. Crane. I knew I got a call from Enos Cabell, you know, my old longtime partner. And, uh, and he had told me that he had talked to Baggy and some of the other uh, uh, Astros that were here before, some of the guys that I had tremendous amount of, of respect for. And, uh, uh, you know, that made up my mind right then. Plus. Man, this, this is a great team. I mean, I, you know, this was a great team before I got here. And, uh, you know, don't tell the Nationals I was rooting for this team to beat the Nationals. <laughs> you know, and uh, so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited. And, and, you know, I love this. I love the city, actually. I mean, I spent probably more time here than I have any other city other than where I was living. Okay, uh, Barry over here. Question for both of you. Jim, why only a one-year deal with club option? Um, we don't discuss our contracts um, on our managers, um, but Dusty's here. His goal is the same as ours, to win a championship, and hopefully there's more than one. So that's all I can comment on that. Dusty, it's been nearly 50 years since you were taken under the wing by the hammer. Mm -hmm. During the course of that time, your role as both a player and a manager into analytics and how you've embraced it? Mm -hmm. Well, you know something, uh, I'm always about change. Um, you know, I'm a guy that, that how many men 70 years old have a 20-year-old son? And I just had my first grandchild 15, 15 days ago. 
So, you know, like uh, I enjoy and embrace, uh, uh, you know, being modern, but also being old school at the same time. And I don't see why we can't combine the both of them. I mean, the other day I was listening to B.B. Uh, uh, King and he was playing with Eric Clapton. I was listening to the Stones and they were playing with, with Muddy Waters. So, you know, I, I like to think that I can, you know, combine the two plus, you know, but forever, since I've been in the game and since I've been managing, um, there's always been something similar to analytics. It just didn't have a name. You know, every day I would I would uh, uh, write down uh, batter, first batter efficiency out of the bullpen, left right matchup, who hits in the double plays, who who's gonna uh, stri uh, prone to the strikeout. So, see, this isn't really new. It's just we just put a name on it compared to what it was before. Okay, Christy. Dusty, are you disappointed that you're only one of two African American managers in the big leagues right now? Yes, um, and it's been the last two since since before. But I'm hoping that that what we do and what we uh, you know can motivate you know other other uh, uh, coaches and players to you know to try to strive to get to where I am, and also uh, hopefully this will uh, incite other owners you know to say, hey man, I mean these guys are pretty good at what they do, and these guys are the best. So. Uh, you know, you have to persevere. I mean, uh, and, and my dad taught me a long time ago, you, you, ne you know, you never quit. And, you know, perseverance, uh, you know, breeds character. And as long as there's character, then you got a chance for hope. And uh, this is what I think has been missing sometimes in our, in our world. So I'm here to give some hope. Okay, Brian, the second row. Dusty, the, the team's going to go city to city, and there will be people who are yelling things at him, screaming things at him, accusing him of stuff. Jim's talked about the team making a statement at spring training. How do you plan to navigate this team, this clubhouse, through everything they're about to face? Well, I don't really know yet. You know, <clears throat> um, I, I have to learn, you know, the personnel. I have to uh, talk to the guys because, you know, communication is the key uh, in anything, especially in a team. And... Uh, you know, I've been, uh, you know, a victim of, of similar things myself. You know, I, I've had players on my teams in the past. And uh, uh, so I'm just going to have to talk to them um, and make sure that they stay together and make sure that they continue to love each other the way that they have. Because it comes across the screen, you know, I don't really know them other than a couple guys, but it comes across the screen that this is a tight, a tight group of guys. I mean, it comes across the screen that this, this team uh, uh, doesn't surprise me, the fact that they win. Because I remember I asked Bill Russell, I said, uh, I asked Big Bill, I said, Bill, how did the Celtics win all those championships? So I thought he was going to say Red Arbach. I thought he was going to say is this and that. And he simply told me because they loved each other. And I think that that would take you a long ways. I think this team certainly loves each other. Okay, Chandler's next. Matt. Hey, Dusty. I, I have two really quick. First, are, are you going to make any, are you going to bring any uh, coaches or anybody from the outside in, or are you going to keep the staff intact as it is? Well, it's, 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 it's kind of late, um, you know, with only 10 games. I mean, 10 days left, you know, before spring training starts. Um, you know, I mean, I think that you can ask Mr. Crane, but I think all the guys are, are under contract, um, best to my knowledge. And uh, so, uh, you know, we're going to go with what we have because it's pretty good <laughs> before I got here. And uh, plus it takes a long time to, to learn the personnel uh, when you're coming from the outside and then we really don't have time you know, for that, because we have to, I want to win. I want to start start out hot and get out the gate hot. And then I'm wondering, obviously, with how the Astros have kind of ascended to where they are now, mm -hmm. did you have any preconceived notions about the team and how it was run before you came in? And when you interviewed, what did you learn about this organization? Well, I learned, <clears throat> well, I mean, I knew some of the guys in the organization, you know, but I didn't know, I didn't know Jim Crane. And, uh, you know, it starts at the top. And uh, you got to know what the top is like before you're going to learn what the bottom's like. Or, and um, to me, I've always thought that, you know, down in the clubhouse, that's, you know, we're in the shop. You know, I mean, we're the blue-collar guys that go out there and work, and the shop is, 
in every business, the shop is on the ground floor, and that's what we are. We're on, you know, we're at the shop. So, uh, no, I didn't have any preconceived notions about about anything. I try to, you know, have an open mind about everything, and then try to make up my mind as I go. Okay, Matt, and then Brian. Dusty, when yes. Jim offered you the job, you said, yeah, I'm interested, but there's one blank concern there. Is there, is there one big concern going into this for you? What is, if, if there is, what would it be your biggest concern going into this job? Um, probably, you know, who's going to take Derek Coles, I mean, Garrett Coles' uh, spot spot of excellence but every team I've been on I've always uh, uh, looked for a surprise person to come through a person uh, a young player that gets to uh, figure something out over the winter you don't know why because I always leave a spot for for a surprise and uh, I really don't know who that person may be or persons may be but uh, I got my eyes open to to try to find somebody that all of a sudden got it together and and hopefully he can be as good as Garrett Cole was. Okay, Brian McTaggart and then uh, David. Dusty, how do you, do you go about the next 10 days just getting to know the players, getting up to speed on everything you need to do and mm -hmm. when do you start kind of reaching out to players to, to get to know them? Well, not yet. The next 10 days, man, I got to pack. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you ever pack for uh, seven months, <laughs> that's a long time. <laughs> and then I got to, uh, my hands are sore now from pruning. I got to prune my, uh, my grapes. You know, you gotta, I mean, I got work to do, you know what I mean? I got to see my grandchild, which I've only seen a couple of times. I got to go see my son, you know, I, I got to uh, make sure my, my dogs don't have ticks or worms or any of that kind of stuff. So I got a lot to, you know, I got a lot to do. And then, and then when I get to spring training, I'll, I'll hit the ground running. Okay, great. Dusty, with so many of your former players have talked about the relationships that they have with you that extend beyond baseball and how mm -hmm. important that is with them, including getting to know their families. Correct. Once the time's right. Two-part question. Why is that so important to you and your success? And then whenever it starts, how do you, how do you begin to build those bridges with these Astros players? That's a very good question. I, I, um, I mean, that's how it was. You know, back in our time, back in our day, I mean, Tom Lasorda knew everybody's wife. He knew everybody's kid. I mean, and, and, and guys like to know that you care about them other than them just being a, a number uh, uh, on the team. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's still a people business. And, and people like to know that you genuinely care about them. And, and one of my mentors, Bill, uh, Bill Walsh, you know, who I learned, uh, you know, so much from, you know, he would send flowers to a guy's mom on her birthday, or he would, if you were married, he'd, he'd send something on anniversary or, or whatever, and these things uh, matter, uh, because uh, s sooner or later, um, you realize that that the players have the same problems that everybody else has, you know. Uh, it just as you have to go out there on a daily basis and play and act like you don't have problems, but the same problems. Uh, baseball is a microcosm of of society, so the same problems that you have in society, the same problems that you have on the field, and that's that's part of my job. I'm sorry, just a quick follow-up. How will you kind of build those bridges once the time's right? Well, I mean, first I got to get to know the players, because you know people don't like you to pry either. And then, and it takes time. It takes time for, you know, to to see who you can kind of, you know, uh, see the personality changes in a person. You know, I remember I had an old coach in, in high school, and my parents were getting divorced, and I learned from him. And uh, I was missing layups and free throws and stuff, and he goes, well, what's wrong with you? And I says, uh, nothing. He goes, something's wrong. And I wanted somebody to talk to with somebody that I could trust and somebody that I knew wasn't going to spread what I was about to tell him that could keep it private on, on what my problems were. And that really helped me in my life and, you know, relieved me of, of the tensions that I was feeling at that, you know, at that moment. So uh, you got to let some of them come to you and, and see which ones that you can, you know, go to them. Okay, Jason and David. Uh, Jim. When it comes to the analytics, how much did you dive into the Astros analytics during the interview process with Dusty? And 
do you believe that he'll be able to satisfy, I guess, the fans' expectations of the Astros' use of analytics, which we've seen over the past few years? Well, um, we talked about it. Um, Dusty explained it pretty simply. I mean, the data is available. Um, he'll have help. He's certainly a very smart guy, so he'll get the speed very quickly on how we like to do things and some of the reasons we do things. And, you know, I've worked with the baseball ops on, on big deals, and when they put the information in front of you, um, you can get to a result pretty quickly. So I don't think you'll have any problem with it. We've got good people that can deliver it in a concise way, and we do it with the players where we, we really don't try to overload them. We just work on the things that need to get done. So I, I have no um, problem that he'll take this and run with it and, and apply it how he feels that he can win games and he can uh, help the players, and that's what, that's what we'll continue to do. Okay, David, then Jerome. Uh, Dusty, the Astros apparently used their sign signaling system several times against the Nationals in 2017 mm -hmm. based on uh, the information that a, 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 a person logging games has, has come up with. What's your reaction to that, and do you intend to talk to the players about what was done in 2017 and why they did it? Mm, I'll talk to them at some point in time, but I don't know. I don't even know how many players are still here from 2017. You know, so, uh, uh, you know, that's that's the main to be seen. Like I said, I'll I'll address it when I get there. Uh, I'm not just exactly sure how I'm address it or what I'm going to say. But, uh, you know, we'll get you know, we'll get to the bottom of it uh, and then and then try to flush it and forget it and go on about what we have to do. OK, Jerome and then Mark. Hey, sort of along those lines, Dusty, in the past, you've had strong feelings about sign stealing that wasn't as you know, high tech is what the Astros have been uh, accused of doing. What, what was your feeling from an outsider in terms of what was done and how it was done? And do you still feel as strongly about sign stealing being so against the game and, and what it's all about? Well, I mean, I wasn't there. And, and, you know, my feelings haven't changed. You know, my feelings haven't changed as far as, you know, gamesmanship and, and, and playing the game. But at the same time, um, you know, we have to go forward. You know, we can't go backwards. And uh, you got to go forward and, and make sure that it doesn't happen again. I mean, it's, it's certainly not going to happen on, you know, on my watch here. And uh, uh, I don't foresee it happening ever again because this, is, this has been an embarrassment for, you know, for a lot of people. Okay, Mark. Dusty, when you came to town a few days ago, you said, it's a, people uh, people want to feel wanted, mm -hmm. and Jim made you feel wanted. How important was that? No, it was very important. I mean, I think everybody in this room want to feel wanted, you know, by somebody. And uh, especially you want to feel wanted at your workplace as much as, as, much as anything, uh, because then you give your all. You know, then, then you'll work uh, uh, more hours than, than, than you're scheduled to work. And, uh, you know, I think to feel, you know, the need to feel wanted is a, a very basic human, uh, uh, you know, thing that we all need. So, the, you know, it was very important, you know, for me especially to take me away from, you know, my family and take me away from my home, take me away from my businesses. Uh, and so if I didn't feel wanted, then heck, man, out of state in Sacramento. Given, given where you've, uh, where you were, and you told us your last hurrah. Mm -hmm. Where does this moment stack up for you? And given you think of all the moments you've had as a player and as uh, a manager. Well, the way I look at it, it's already, it's already written for me, or else it, it wouldn't have transpired and happened, you know, like this. And, uh, you know, uh, my son. You know, I keep talking about him, but he keeps me, keeps me, you know, kind of hip. And so, <laughs> you know, and then so the other day, you know, he was listening to uh, to Too Short, and uh, and he said that this is uh, you may not know him, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, and and and, and Too Short was singing that this is last album, and this is my last album. Except I'm too tall. <laughs> <laughs> We're running short on time. A couple more. We got Adam and then Chandler. Uh, Dusty, this team does not have a general manager right now, right here. 
this team doesn't have a general manager right now. Right. What are the qualities that you think make a good GM? Would you like to have some input in that process? And Jim, where does that search stand? You want Jim first? Yeah, I'll, I'll go. Uh, go ahead. Listen, we, when, when um, this transpired, um, we said we really needed to work hard on the manager. I think um, we got through that process fairly quickly. Um, we interviewed a lot of great candidates. We're in the middle of that right now. And we, you know, we hope to have um, something done, you know, in the middle of spring training, maybe in the next couple of weeks. Um, but we're going to take our time, just like we did. Uh, we, we're going to talk to a lot of people and, and do a thorough a check on what's available. Um, there's a possibility we could stay pat with the people we have for the time being, um, and there's a possibility we could bring someone new. So we'll make that decision pretty quickly, and we'll be able to analyze that. And you know, um, we're all, we're constantly trying to improve the team. Um, as I said before, we have a very deep staff here. They're very capable. Um, we've met with them all. We've reorganized the department a little bit to be a little more efficient, and, and we'll probably hire a few people down the line. Um, but I'm very comfortable where we're at. This team will run. Dusty on the point with the field was our main concern. Um, we'll be in good shape. Okay, Mr. Baseball. Skipper, as a player and as, of course, as your managerial uh, career, You've always been in the National League. Now, interleague play has afforded you the opportunity, of course, to see the American League clubs. Now, here, you are in the junior circuit. Your thoughts on the adjustments and your feeling on going through that schedule now? That's a very good question. I mean, like I said, interleague play is, and, and spring training, we usually use the DH. You know, it's, uh, but there are a couple things that you have to learn, you know, like, uh, you know, this year we got the 26 man roster. We got the, uh, you know, the bullpen guy got to face three, three batters. And so uh, there are some things that, you know, you're going to have to make some adjustments, but I, you know, I make adjustments, uh, you know, rather quickly. And also the staff that's here has, uh, you know, what I don't know or feel at that time, you know, that's what I have the staff for here because they've been in this American League for a long time. And uh, the thing, I haven't played uh, all the teams in the American League. And so I'm going to have to really depend on the analytics staff, the staff that's here on the field, you know, to, you know, to make me abreast and, and keep me abreast on, on the teams that we're playing. You know, like I don't know much about Toronto. There are certain teams I don't know a whole bunch about because I haven't seen them. The White Sox, other than watching them on TV, and uh, you know, once you become familiar with somebody, now I'll know, you know, how to attack them. I'll know what their kryptonite is, and I'll know what their strengths and weaknesses are. So I'm um, just gonna have to, you know, do like I've always done. Uh, you know, do as much studying uh, as possible. Okay, folks, we're running short on time. I apologize. I won't be able to get to everybody, but at least everybody once we could, David, and then Obaldo, and, and then we're done, okay? Does the Astros fans have been through a lot the last couple of months with the World Series and, and the scandal. Uh, what is your message to them moving forward? Well, hey, man, you got good, sta um, you know, good fans here. I mean, great fans. And, uh, you know, we're all in the process of, of healing. And, uh, you know, just stay together. Uh, that's what Bill Walsh told me long time ago to tell my team to stay together and and for the fans you know to rally around the team and stay together uh, because uh, these players I mean they love their fans here I mean uh, when I'm watching games on TVs man I mean these fans are into it I mean they're I mean really into it and uh, when I was on the other side of the field here I really didn't like coming here to play because the fans be, you know are a factor here in this ballpark and uh, so uh, you got great fans here, and uh, the, the whole thing is, is, you know, we'll get through this, and, uh, you know, we'll all heal together. Okay, last one, Ubaldo. Hola, Mr. Baker. Hola. Rumor has it you speak Spanish. Si, seguro. Do you feel comfortable enough to maybe give some words in Spanish to our Hispanic viewers uh, on what it means to you to be here in Houston? I don't know, man. That <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty good, but it makes me tired. <laughs> Okay, you know, so I'll talk to you. I'll talk to you. Uh, a los uh, fanáticos aquí está en, en Houston. Uh, uh, yo tengo uh, uh, mucho um, amor um, y, uh, y venga aquí a la, a la parque. Y, y nosotros está, uh, muchos nos tramos um, 
how you say, uh, together, uh, juntos. A uh, nosotros está mucho juntos. Y yo estoy cansado ahora. Gracias. Thank you.